Today on Pots and Trials, I'm going to be planting this lovely mature apple tree, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Darlac, and Mr. Fothergills. Hello, welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, today I'm going to plant this lovely container grown tree. This is a tree that has been grafted and grown in this pot for about 15 years. It's on a, a dwarfing rootstock, so it is getting fairly mature. Um, it's a, a lovely variety, an old variety called James Greve, which is an early eating apple, usually ready in about September time. Really nice, tasty apple, reliable as well. So it's going to be planted just here in the corner of this plot. Um, it's in a pot, so it's perfect to plant them at this time of the year. We've just got to give it though, a little bit of TLC to make sure that it's established. And you can see it's in this big pot where it's been grown. So this is where it's going to be. So what I'm going to do to start with is to mark out the pot. Um, so I've got to dig a hole, obviously bigger than this pot. So it's a good idea to pop, put the pot down and I'm just going to use my spade and I'm just going to chop the turf. So you can see I've got a good four or five inches. The hole is going to be wider than the pot and that allows us to get some nice loose soil down in there. And once we've gone all the way round and I can't see where I started, I think it was there. What I can do is just move this out the way. It's quite a heavy one, but Jill can't help because she's filming it. So there we go. You might need help if it's heavy. And then what we're going to do is just slice off this turf and then I can start digging the hole. So the turf can come off. It's ideal, of course, if you've got any repairs that you want to do in and around the garden, you can use this for patching in any damaged bits on your lawn. Right, so that's the turf out. So we've got a nice circle shape there. And then what we can do is dig out. Now, obviously this is a big pot, so we've got quite a lot of soil to dig out. We're not gonna need it all to go back in either. So best thing is to get a wheelbarrow or a big container to put it in. So it's just a case now of doing the digging. I'll be back in a bit. Right, so I've got the hole out. I think it's big enough. And I've just made sure that the bottom isn't compacted. If, it, if you're on a clay soil, it's worth just loosening the base. This is quite good soil, even down into the subsoil. So I've just leveled it out. But what I want to do is to check the depth because I've taken the plant tree out of its pot. And you can see it's a big, heavy root board. You don't want to be lifting that in and out of these big pots. So what I'm doing, if I hold my fork against it, put my finger there, which is the depth of the root box. That's about right. We can go a little bit deeper. This is the root stock. This is where the graft was done. So I don't mind if the soil comes just a, a tad higher. So about there where my thumb is, I can then use that in there. And that gives me a good indication that the soil is going to be about this level. What we don't want to do is to have to take it out and either dig out more or level it. And the other thing I'm going to do is just make sure, even if you've loosened it, just make sure it's firm so it doesn't settle afterwards it's worth spending a bit of time just preparing the hole now because some people nowadays say square holes um i'm perhaps a bit old-fashioned i like a round hole but if you're on heavy clay a square hole is worth doing because where you've got the square the roots grow to that piece and they can break through into the clay soil but this is a round one um, and it's going to be fine i'm absolutely sure and then i'm just going to get a handful of this is just a general fertiliser, just one handful. I just rake that in so that the roots at the base have got some nutrients to grow down into. And then the fun bit, we've now got to put this tree into this hole, which is going to be difficult because it's a two person job. Jill's on the camera and I've got this. Pick the best side as well. I've had a good look around this and the best side is looking at it from this way. So I'm going to twist it round first of all, 180 degrees get it to the side of the hole and then 
I'm just going to very carefully and I say if it's heavy don't do this on your own I don't want to be responsible and I'm just going to lower that down car oh, and that I think is pretty perfect look the levels are there we've got room to put the soil in it and everything so it looks much smaller when it's down at this level doesn't it so what we need to do now is to use some of the soil we've dug out and to backfill it so we want the soil to go right the way down the gap all the way round it and I've saved the best topsoil for doing this so what I've done is I've filled that gap with soil but obviously the tree is still going to wobble so what I'm going to do and that's the reason why we leave a gap of several inches around because we want to be able to get our heel of our boot in so that I can give that a really good firm if we leave that soil loose like that and I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on this if I leave that soil loose all it's going to do is just settle and there's nothing there for the roots to go into it will dry out so it is a case of giving it a really Good, and already that's firmed up that root ball. It's just a bit awkward getting in, but it's worth doing that. And then we can just top that up with more of this good soil, like that. Just use the spade to get it nice and level. And again, just going to use my foot to, to firm that all the way round so that it's in contact with the roots. You'll notice I didn't pull the roots out on the tree because it wasn't that pot bound. If they were very pot bound, I would tease one of the roots out, but there's no need to disturb them, don't do it. It just sets the tree back a little bit. So there we go. I'm happy now, just a little bit more soil I think, and we're there. And then I'll show you how to put the stake in and tie it. It's always a good idea to stake a young tree. I mean, this one would probably be okay. It's a strong graft, but if it gets a bit of wind, it's just gonna whip it around. So it's a good idea for the first year or two to have a stake. Now, what I can't do is drive one straight down because that's gonna go through the existing root ball and cause damage. So what I'm gonna do is put one in at an angle like this. So it's just a piece of wood with a point on the end there. And I'm going to put it in at an angle and knock it in and then we'll brace it here. I don't need to hold it at the top. What I want is just to make sure that here it's nice and firm. So I'm going to put that in and then it's sometimes easier with two, but Jill is otherwise engaged. So I'm just going to use a, a hammer just to give that good old knock into the soil. And I'm just going to obviously don't want to damage the apple either so it's just drive that down so we get it nice and firm we can always trim if we need to afterwards that's going in nicely and just make sure that's going to be okay yeah and just give it a bit more of a, a tap just a couple more inches as I say, if you can't get it in far enough, just get your saw and give it a trim. But I think that is going to be okay. Whew. Who needs a workout with that? So what we need it to be is also straight in all directions. I'm just going to knock that a little bit more. Otherwise it will annoy me. That's better. So then we need a tree stake. Uh, tree tie rather so tree tie here this is a buckle one which is nice and easy to fit you can get all different types comes with a spacer so there's a spacer there put that on 
thread that through like that so that acts as a buffer between the stake and the tie just get it into a, a good position get that nice and tight and then I think I've just adjusted need to adjust that a little okay that's fine and then it's just a buckle like a buckle on a belt so we can tie it to that well there like that and then obviously I can tie tie that off or get rid of it just cut it off but I'll just put it there out of the way at the minute so that's holding that nice and firmly there so when you get a bit of wind on it it's going to be okay and the final thing I'm going to do is just a little bit more fertilizer sprinkled around the top so that that will wash down to the roots just work that in and tidy it up and then what we always need to do of course with anything that's newly planted is give it a drink so just a drink of water you could give it some seaweed if you like that's really good for establishing roots and that's just make sure we go all the way around so it settles the soil not just where the original root ball is in the middle but also around the edge so that washes the nutrients down settles the soil so all the roots are in contact with moist soil and you probably need to do this once a week for the next couple of months through the summer just to make sure that it's got a really good start we don't want it to dry out completely but we don't want it to be waterlogged and that will soak away nicely over the next couple of minutes and that is it just keep your eye on it if you think that it's looking a little bit thirsty don't worry now this one as you can see has got a lot of apples already on it which is a bonus some of these will fall off these little ones here we get a thing called the June drop and in June and early July in the north of England some of the apples will fall off but this these bigger ones will be fine so don't worry if some of the apples do fall off that's actually just regulating what it can grow and this will grow and make a wonderful apple and it will crop for years and years and years well thank you for watching pots and trials remember all our videos that we've done over goodness knows how long you can find on youtube and on facebook next week we'll be back in the garden doing more practical jobs so we'll see you then bye